you know, today to have gotten where you are today and to go where you are going to go tomorrow, you're going to have to eat a whole lot of frogs. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Suzanne Morgan. I am the Chief Accountant, Chief Profit Advisor here at Morgan CPA. I am also the host of the Profit Talk podcast, as well as the author of Profit First for Minority Business Enterprises. Today, before I head out, I want to talk to you about your next steps, your next steps, your next plan of action. And it's interesting because one of the questions that I often get from entrepreneurs and small businesses today is, what should I do in a world of flux and change, right? Especially in the world of COVID-19, what should a small business do? And I'm going to be honest with you, this is a question that every small business in America has to face. In fact, we had to face it. We had to face it. We're not immune to what's happening in this world, just like any of you. And I'll be honest with you, when we first started doing these master classes, it was way before COVID that we were planning these out. As you guys can tell, we put a whole lot of effort in these master classes. And literally when COVID-19 hit, right, and they were telling us, our mayor was saying, you know, there's going to be stay-at-home orders, social distancing. Our team and I literally looked at each other and we were like, what did we do? What did we do? And should we even continue with having these master classes, right? Why should we even continue, even though we put a whole lot of effort? Will the world even be able to hear what we have to say? And I'll be honest with you, it was tempting to cancel. It was very tempting to cancel. After all, our team was already busy. We were already pretty booked. But we literally looked at each other and said, you know what? The show must go on. The show must go on. And the show must go on because COVID is here to stay. COVID is here to stay. And the government is telling us that it's going to be here at least through May, at least through May before everyone's vaccinated. And we're probably going to be in a social distance environment at least through the end of 2021, right? And so our team realized that if we decided to go home and be like everyone else, we would literally be closing our shop for at least two years. That's what we decided. And so as a team, we decided, you know what, we're going to go ahead and go for We're going to go ahead and go for We're going to go ahead and pivot. And we decided that we were going to be part of the solution and helping America pivot, right? Helping American entrepreneurs pivot and move forward, even in the midst of COVID. And so here today and this week, I've been here teaching you how to implement profit first in your system and in your business. And the reason why is because COVID's here to stay. COVID is here to stay. And although we are on the tip of relief with vaccines coming, some of the changes that you are already experiencing are gonna become a permanent part of your life. I mean, they're not gonna go away. Our business is literally gonna be different than what it has ever been. And social distancing is going to be here for a while. And as small businesses, we're going to have to operate differently, right? We're going to have to operate differently. And as a small business, my, my question for you entrepreneurs is what are you going to do? What are you going to do in the midst of this new environment? You know, statistics are telling us that at least 50% of small businesses are not going to make it out of this pandemic, right? 50% are not going to make it out of the pandemic. In fact, I read on Yelp that at least 60% of the small businesses that were there prior to the pandemic have already closed their door permanently. 60% of small businesses have already closed. And literally, that means that a lot of your neighbors, right, a lot of your peers have already gone home, shut their door, and frankly, went home to collect the government check, right? They've already closed their doors and went to collect the government check. And probably a lot of your friends have already gone home and collected a government check. But for those of you guys who are here today, who are here to be in business, who are here to really build your legacy, even in the midst of hard times, you're going to go ahead and go on to build a legacy, okay? You guys are going to go on and build a legacy. And if you do it right, if you do it right, especially in this time of transition and change, right, you will literally grow to become the next market leader. Literally, you'll be the next market leader. Literally, you will pivot. And what this means is that you're going to not only adjust to the new reality, but you're going to pave a new way, okay? You're going to pay a new way, and you're literally going to show the world just how entrepreneurship is done. You know, my kids have been amazing this week, right? You, they have been amazing. Who has even known, right? Um, they have been amazing this week. You know, their schools have been partially in session and partially closed, right? So they've been doing remote learning because of the COVID environment, right? So they have been here with me. They're in this COVID environment. They have been like amazingly quiet with no interruptions. And it's hard because, you know, one's 10 and one's 13. It's hard being well-behaved in this situation. But one thing that I promised them is that if they're really good, and I mean really, really good, my kids can choose to have lunch delivered from wherever they want. That's what I promised them for their behavior. 
And one night, several months ago, I was sitting at home and this commercial for Pizza Hut literally pops up on my TV and it's just a commercial. But in this commercial, it's a little bit different because in this commercial, Pizza Hut promised me that they are dedicated to my safety. And what they're promising me is they're not going to touch my pizza. They're not going to breathe on my pizza. In fact, they're dedicated to protecting me from COVID-19. And in this commercial, there's this guy and he's holding this really long wooden stone, right? And he's going into a can, he's wearing gloves, right? And he's showing people wearing, wearing gloves, right? And what they're messaging to me as a consumer is that they're going to protect me, right? They're going to protect me. And their commercials and their shows prove every bit of it, right? They're out to protect me. And so my question to you entrepreneurs is what is the need of your customer right now? What is the need of your customer right now? What is concerns them most right now? What's keeping them up at night, right? What's keeping your customer up at night? You know, I had a reporter that contacted me many months ago, right at the start of the pandemic. And one of the questions this reporter wanted to know, he goes, you know, Suzanne, what opportunities do you see in the market now that we live in the world of coronavirus? And if you guys haven't figured out, if you guys have been with me now for a week, um, I'm a pretty deep thinker, right? I think about things and I spin things in my head. And this question that this reporter literally asked me kept spinning in my head. And the, the answer that just kept coming up over and over again was, you know what? The answer is to the question, the opportunities are still here. The opportunities are still here. The needs are still here. The money is still here. The money didn't vanish overnight. It just switches pockets, right? It just moves like water, right? From one hand to another. The money is still here. The opportunities are still here. The needs are still here. And so my question is, how will we as business owners pivot to meet the new market demand, right? How will we pivot to meet the new market demand? For example, if I was a hardworking woman, right? And if you were a hardworking woman or man before the pandemic, right? You are still a hardworking woman or man, right? The pandemic didn't change you, right? And if, if you didn't have enough time to cook, right? Before the pandemic, right? You still don't have time to cook, right? Because you found another way to keep yourself busy. And, and so restaurants, did I, did I not mention meal planning opportunities? Did I not mention meal planning opportunities? Restaurants, if you can sell me a different meal plan every single day and you can promise me on-time delivery and you can promise me contactless delivery. And if you can make me feel safe in your messaging, then you have a customer for life, right? You have a customer for life. You know, last week during our session, I gave you the example of my doctor, right? I told you about, I have allergies. I've had them all my life. I've, and I've been with him for the last decade. So these were nothing new, these allergies, right? And in the example, I said, you know what? can I have an online appointment? So I don't have to go into your office. So I don't have to be exposed to COVID. Can I just get an online appointment? And if my doctor had only accommodated this request, right? If he only said, you know, I'll see you on Zoom, you know, because I'm a small practitioner. I don't subscribe to those major services, but I'll see you on Zoom. What would have happened was he would have retained a customer for life, right? He would have retained a customer for life versus saying, you know what, you need to come into my office and I'm saying no. And so I go on WebMD, right? He could have retained a customer for life had he simply just pivoted, accommodated, looked at what his customer needed at this particular moment and figure out how do I serve need in a new and unique way that still allows me to give the same great service, but still allows me to meet the need, right? He could have retained a customer for life. So entrepreneurs, what I'm saying is the demand is still there. The demand is still there. And so the question is, how will you reach your potential buyer, right? How will you pivot to serve them and how will you allow them to get to know you, right? How will you get to know your customer this week, the same way that I got to know each and every one of you this week, right? How will you reach across the string? How will you shake a hand and get to know a new customer this week, right? So entrepreneurs, pivot, 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 because the opportunities are still there. The money is still there. The needs are still there. Pivot to service the need, okay? Pivot to service the need. Now, some of you guys are asking me, what's the hardest part about getting started on Profit First, right? This is funny because I always get that question. And I always laugh when I get this question because I have to be honest with you, the hardest part about getting started on Profit First is just getting started, okay? Now, once a stone starts rolling down the hill, right? Once that momentum starts to build, don't you ever get in front of a boulder once it starts rolling, right? Don't you guys that live in the mountains, don't you ever get in front of a boulder, right? Because you won't be able to stop it. 
And I love what Mark Twain says, right? If it's your job to eat a frog, it's the best thing to do it in the morning, right? And if it's your job to eat two frogs, it's best to eat the bigger one first because the bigger one first is gonna it's gonna go down. The second one's gonna go down a lot smoother. So profit first entrepreneurs, eat the frog, eat the frog, eat the frog. You know, today to have gotten where you are today and to go where you are gonna go tomorrow, you're gonna have to eat a whole lot of frogs, right? Eat the frog, eat the frog, get started. Start with a 1% allocation, start with a 1% allocation and, and gain momentum as you go along, you know, gradually increase it from there. And if you wanna go faster and you wanna go farther and you wanna go faster, then go with an experienced profit first coach like me, okay? Now, some of you guys are absolutely afraid to make the first step. You know, you're afraid of the unknown, you're afraid of failure. And some of you guys are even afraid of where you're going to go, right? And some of you guys are wondering, you know, well, I'm going to, am I going to even be able to handle this level of success, right? Because it's profit first, right? It's physics. Will I be able to handle this level of success is what some of you guys are thinking. Will you be able to handle that type of wealth? Will you be able to make those hard decisions? Because yes, you're going to have to make some hard decisions, okay? And for you, what I'm going to say is weigh the return on investment, weigh the return on investment. What happens if you continue down the same road? What happens if you don't change? Will you just stay the same? And what happens if you decide to go ahead and make that step? What happens if you commit to change? What are the unlimited possibilities that are there for you if you decide to go for it? What would it mean for you to get every single thing that you want? Write it down, write it down. What would it mean to get every single thing you, you want? What would it mean for you to be debt free? to not have to worry about how you're going to make payroll next week, to be able to weather these storms like COVID, right? To be able to take that vacation, better yet, take an unplanned vacation, go home, tell your spouse, honey, pack your bag. We're going off for the weekend. Okay. Imagine being able to go to a car dealer, drop cash and walk out with a car of your dreams. Imagine being able to retire worry-free and be able to live a life that lives a legacy.